G'day, here we are in Gunnedah and we've just landed at Pensioners Hill. So uh, there's some fantastic sculptures as you're walking up to the top of the hill and then there's a, a big pergola and there's a great look out across Gunnedah. So let's go and have a look at that. It's a nice leisurely stroll up the hill. The sculptures are fantastic. My favourites are the ones with the faces, they're so well done. Most of these sculptures had snakes on the other side of them. Should have bought some snacks, put on the barbie and really enjoy this view. This is spectacular. Gunada has a population of around 13,000 and its main industries are agriculture, coal mining, agricultural supplies and retail. The name Gunnedah comes from the Camilleroy word meaning a place of many white stones. It is on the Camilleroy country, about 50 minutes west of Tamworth and around five hours northwest of Sydney by car. The gardens at Pensioners Hill have all native trees and plants. It was really nice to see the gum trees in flower. Aren't they just beautiful? These carved trees feature totem animals of the Camilleroy peoples. A lot of the shops close around Saturday afternoon. Yanadar is a quiet country town with lots of shops though.
The Gunadar Rural Museum is a great place to visit. It's open every day, 9 to 3, except Christmas and Good Friday. Entry for adults is $10. Concession is 7 and children get in for $2. There's also a men's shed group in the museum. Most of the items in the shop here at the museum are made by local craftspeople. As you enter the museum, you'll see a display of war memorabilia and a firearms display. I remember having these types of Tonka toys when I was young. It's a great trip down memory lane. I used to use these cases in first grade at school. That's a long time ago. The museum was uh, started in 1988 uh, with four gentlemen here in town that had collections and they outgrew their, uh, their own private properties so they went to council and got a, um, a grant, I suppose you'd call it, to build the, the first the shed right up the front mm. and then it's just grown from there. Um, the items in here, the museum doesn't own them all. Uh, we'd be about 70% uh, I think now uh, is all privately owned. Wow. So um, the museum owns quite, you know, quite a bit of stuff, but there's, there's a lot of private collections. Yeah. Uh, as I've said to you, that the next shed in here is the Ron Glosser collection. Well, that's all Ron's own private gear. We've got around, at this stage, we're looking probably, we'd have about 300 members. Wow. Um, and... That's good for a small town. The, uh, the other thing we do here too, we've got uh, what we call club plates, hmm. uh, cheap registration. Well, the right word to say, cheap registration. Uh, the vehicles or tractors or whatever have got to be over 30 year old. Um, we put them on club plates. Where is one? The one here behind you. Yep. It is, it's got on a, on a historic plate. It's a tractor. It costs you around about the uh, $47 a year for registration, which includes your green, yeah, includes the green slip. Mm -hmm. um, and all we say here in, in the Gundar Rural Museum is that the item must have insurance on it. Yeah. Some other people don't, don't do that. So, but uh, we, we've just made it a rule that anything that's like a tractor or a truck or a car or whatever, 
uh, must have its own comprehensive insurance on it. Okay, so to put your vehicle or your tractor in here, it needs to be historically registered? No, 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 no. Yep. Um, having your on historic plates means that we can drive it around the street, yep. uh, or drive it, uh, we do tractor treks uh, with different people or different groups. Mm -hmm. uh, it just means you can put it on the road. Yeah. It's like a, a normal registration. Right. But just so that it's a lot cheaper. Um, and I say, but the vehicle's got to be over 30 year old. Chatting with Ian was really interesting and informative. It's funny seeing some of the things you used to use, like your lawnmower, now in a museum. Thanks for your time, Ian. Just duck in here and make a quick phone call. It's amazing, I've never seen this before. This whole cabinet is full of tools and they're all numbered and indexed. So if you're looking at some of these old tools and you don't know what they are, what they're supposed to do, you just look it up. So if we look here at number 97, I've never seen that tool before. Then we have a look down here. 97, it's a box scraper or a cane scraper. So there you go. I loved this room with all the different collections. It's really amazing what people can gather. from the Sydney Olympics 2000. Tim Tams, still in their wrappers and boxes. I owned a 1966 Beetle the same as this when I was young. I currently own a 1958 Beetle, the year after this blue one. Model trains are a favourite, and this one at the museum was a great setup. The kids would have so much fun here, like we did. Porcupine Lookout is on the south side of town and has fantastic views over Gunnedah as well as the Liverpool Plains to the south. Such a beautiful landscape. For the movie buffs, you may be interested to know that parts of the Superman Returns movie were filmed out there in the fields. At the end of the day, we had dinner at the Railway Hotel with family. Rump steak and veggies. Mixed grill, no veggies. Chicken schnitzel and coleslaw. Classic chicken parmi and salad.
We don't know where we're spending our time next, but we know we want to share those minutes with mates.